Hey guys, Omar here and welcome to part two of our travel lens series featuring the Rokinon 12mm f2. Now if you didn't check out part one, we had the 56 1.2, but I think I would be leaving this lens behind. It just was a little clunky, a little big, and really was not go to it. Now, as far as the Rokinon 12 millimeter F2, no brainer to bring on vacation. Now this lens kind of falls under the category of the 16 millimeter Fuji 1.4. You may also be thinking about the 10 to 24 millimeter zoom, any kind of ultra wide, fantastic for vacation. I just think that this little cheap guy has a lot of benefits if you're on a budget or if you just don't have, if you mostly have primes, you know, like the 35 F2 or a 50 and you want just one wide lens that you're not gonna use that often, this is so cheap and works great that I think it's almost a no-brainer. But you decide, don't go by me, okay? It's been working out great for me. <laughs> Top reasons why this is a great travel lens. One, it's cheap. Two, very sharp. Three, it has a fantastic minimum focus distance. And this 2.0 aperture allows you at least to let in a lot of light. So maybe you want to shoot at night or if you're walking around uh, in a dark city at night as well. Some may consider it a negative, but it is a manual focus lens. That's not a negative for me uh, because it's kept the cost way down. And the manual focus on this lens is the throw is from there to there. You can actually do it in whoop. And when you're fine tuning, it's just really, the focus is nice. It's like really tight. And so with focus peaking and your eye on there, you get very used to just manually focus and you really don't miss autofocus. Another negative I forgot about the lens is it doesn't record your EXIF data. It only records your shutter speed. It only shows it as a 50 millimeter lens at F1. So you have to write down your settings if you wanna kinda of look back at your pictures and learn from them. Okay, first, one thing I was finding with the lens is it's very easy to take snapshots of everything you see. You know you've been on vacation and you're like, wow, this is beautiful, click, and there's nothing going on in the back of your camera. You can see everything is beautiful, but you're not really getting images that, that do the location justice. So I was finding sometimes it was a little tough to compose, you know, wider images. Like for example, this was a beautiful spot, but the picture just doesn't work. So I was trying different angles and different, and so I felt that this was probably at f8 or f11 because everything is in focus. But here I tried to use the plants to frame uh, this little rock formation in the background. So one kind of tough thing was, you know, getting good composition because everything is in the frame. So you have to look around and try to get the best spot. This little tree right here, I took it f2. And just to show you that, you know, it's a nice little tree and you can see in the background, it's got great separation in the back. You know, the background is very blurry. But one thing I found too, that coming back into a hotel room and looking at the pictures that, and this is true with most photographs, that some of them are done when you take the picture, but some of them are half done. And so we sometimes have to do a little bit of post-processing. So this one I felt worked a little better as a black and white. I don't know, you tell me maybe, maybe not but I kind of like it as a print. In my head, I was thinking as a print, it would look better like this. This is another example of that. I, I stood by these trees trying to make something good and took the shot, you know, and back in the hotel room, blah. But again, I took the raw file and processed it to make something a little bit more interesting. And so you have to think that maybe sometimes the lens can't do everything. Think that it can only do half of what you're trying to envision. And sometimes you don't know what you want to take a picture of. Sorry, sometimes you don't know what you want the end result to be and you have to sit and sort of do post-processing. So post-processing is important. And I felt like this is an example of where the Rokinon kicks butt, but really at a camera, it looks ugh, terrible. So something to think about. Here's another example, something kind of boring and there's only one way to spice up an old Western wagon. Sepia, baby. Now my first ever attempt to do astrophotography was a failure. Uh, there actually was a moon, a full moon coming up. So those of you that are great at astrophotography, you can really use this lens a lot better than I did, but it was fun. Again, 2.0, there's my sun in the background and you get some really nice, here's some cool little desert flowers. And I really like the look of that. I think, 
And like I mentioned, my first Rokinon review, that's the strength of this lens is shoot it at F2, man. It's super fun. <laughs> okay, the GoPro effect, not so much for video because there is no image stabilization on it, but you can get some super wide shots of like hotel rooms, of the bus ride up to Zion National Park here. If I put my 18 to 55 kit lens on there, it wouldn't take the whole environment, which is what I wanted to do. Uh, it can do portraits, but be careful. If you're subject, to, my son has 14 foot legs here. <laughs> if things are centered up, you know, really nice in the middle, you can show the environment and have your subject, as long as they're kind of in the middle of the lens, you should be okay. Another great super wide, just walking around. This is a JPEG edited. Remember I mentioned in the last video uh, with the JPEGs, I just kind of boost their saturation and get the shadows up a bit. I'll show you the raw file, what it looks like. And this is how it, you know, when you get back to the hotel room, this is what you need to do with that one. I'll put up, I don't have it here, but I'll put up what this JPEG looks like at a camera. You don't have to do that much work with the, I just like editing the JPEGs now, it's great. Another example of uh, Velvia film simulation right out of camera, uh, and there's the raw file. <laughs> cool, I got the tripod thingy again, put it on a rock, shot this at F2, and you can see how dreamy the front is here, and you, everything else in the background is sharp. So I basically focus to the background and let everything in the foreground get really out of focus at F2. So that was a cool technique and I like it. It looks really nice. Cool, funky, super wide shots like this tree, love it. Again, the 18 to 55 kit lens wasn't wide enough for shots like this. And I like putting people in the images for scale when things are so beautiful and big like this. This is Bryce Canyon uh, at sunrise and I started to see a little bit of a problem. I left this lens hood behind because it just didn't fit great all three lenses in the bag. I'm gonna need a bigger bag. But what was happening was there there's a lot of flare going on, baby, and not the good kind. Um, here's an example of the lens flare. I had to use my hand to block out a lot of the glare and flare that was going on. And it works great for food photography. You would think a super wide is too weird, but remember it's got a nice little f minimum focus distance. So what I do is I take the flip screen like this and put it over the plate and take a nice shot of some beautiful gourmet food or your standard American meal. Great for travel architecture. So if you're visiting museums or New York City or Prague, this looks like it's a cathedral or something, but this is Las Vegas. <laughs> After being in the desert for a while, it was nice to do some architectural photography. So great for that. And here's where there's a non-shot, you know, these little Murano glass up on the ceiling, but I just walked right under it and turned my camera up and, you know, got a super wide. I got myself a screensaver. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna share that one below. Screensaver for everyone, yeah! Definitely a keeper for me for vacation. Great travel lens to have as my super wide for architecture, for landscapes, for getting close to items at 2.0. I highly recommend this lens for its price, for its quality. All right guys, I'll see you next time.